It's hard to believe that it's been three years, but if you follow along with us, it was 2019 in the spring that we kicked off this project that we call Project 17. For those of you guys that watched it, you understand. If you don't understand, we took 17 acres of tillable property and converted it all to wildlife habitat. And it consisted of a center mainframe shape of hardwood tree plantings. We've got about 2,500 or so oaks, got different uh, species of oaks planted in here, surrounded by warm season grasses, separated by fire breaks of uh, clover in between the tree plantings, around the outside edge of the tree plantings, between that and the warm season grass stand, and additionally, uh, clover breaks between the warm season grasses and the timber. And then in some strategic uh, cove areas here, we have uh, about four to five acres of three through three different food plots that I've done on rotations. To this day, um, Blake and Casey said that the series that we've produced here on this property has been some of the most viewed and most requested for updates of, of any series that we've ever done. So unfortunately, Casey's busy, um, got a growing family. I've got a, a whole lot of responsibility at work. So our time together is not as frequent as it used to be. The primary purpose of, of Casey Kemp coming over is we're doing some conversion uh, of the warm season grass stands. We've learned some things over the last four years. It's hard to believe it's been four years. We've burned these fields twice now in, in the spring. Last spring was the first burn. And we've learned some things. And um, I'm always of the mindset that with habitat, you can always manipulate and change. Nothing is set in stone. I mean, we're gonna, we've disked up some, some fields uh, of stuff that I thought I would never touch again. Um, took a lot of time and trouble to get it established to this point. But excited to show you what we're doing. I think it's a really cool concept. I think um, my, my kind of landscape architecture background uh, has kicked in a little bit and it'll, I'll show you some things I did on the design aspect of it. But um, always trying to create better and better environments for our wildlife here and I think this is gonna be a really cool extension of that. So the concept of what we're doing here and it's, as you can see, it's a, we're really creating some devastation inside, inside the grass stand. The last two years that we've burned, um, sort of the post-burn analysis and looking around, we were really, uh, number one, we were super disappointed that we didn't find a single shed antler on seven acres of warm season grasses. This stand has the three big species, big blue stem, Indian grass, and switchgrass. Mm -hmm. and, and we planted it at seven pounds an acre, mm -hmm. about equal distribution of all three species. And it was as thick as all get out. Yeah. Actually, you know, when, it, when we manage for deer and you throw the warm season grass thing, especially switchgrass dominant, we tend to open that thing up a little bit, you mm -hmm. know? And it's, it's just something that's always been done. And as we go through the time periods of learning and stuff, that's not the case at all. I mean, you look through this field here, this is so beautiful in the sense it's such a good clump grass. Mm -hmm. And if we open it up just a little bit, there's just not enough, there's a lot of litter, you know? Exactly. And, you know, for turkeys, you know, fawns, you know, stuff like that, turkey poults and stuff, you know, it's, that's a nightmare for them. And I think once we open it up a little bit, get some forb component, forb component in there, and just even just bare soil, I think this field's really gonna come alive. That's Both cool. of them, it's, I mean, it's gonna come alive more. And then understanding the, the, the lack of deer utilization in the centers of these things, they were, Trails cutting through it, 
But for the most part, the main stand of the grass was just getting zero usage. So I have to say that I, several years ago, I kind of fell into the, the, the movement or the, I won't say hype, but a lot of conversation about thicker is better and uh, the, the big species, the, the three tall species of warm season grasses, Big Blue, Indian, and Switch that we've got here, um, especially these improved varieties that, that, that we have these days are a bigger plant. They're more robust. They've got larger stem diameter. They have a taller crown when they're full. So some of the seeding rates that might have been really perfect 15 years ago, or 10 years ago for that matter, um, these days, because those grasses are so much bigger, they're really too tight. They're, there's no room in here. When these things are fully up and, and doing their full mature growth, that it felt like you're walking into a straight jacket. That's kind of the way I describe it. And we realized that we, we had to reduce, we had to thin the stand. We were going back in here to thin the stand. So this all started a conversation I had with um, a friend of mine that's a biologist, uh, actually passed a deer the deer state biologist for Indiana, Mariah, and uh, he referred me to a case study at Purdue University that was um, that was done on a on a project field that was planted in 2008. And they went back in and they took sections and they did different techniques of thinning um, applications or thinning uh, techniques to see what kind of different results they got over those areas. And I've got a chart that I referred to that the most successful stand reduction technique was a burn, a spring burn, followed up by two quarts per acre of glyphosate on the re-emerging stand. Actually, they, they talked about a summer application, which we didn't want to do. We didn't want to kill our grasses going in, in, into deer, deer season. So what we did is we did a spring burn last year and came out here and we were going to do an experiment. We were going to do one block and leave the other one as a, as a control. And we mixed up two quarts an acre of glyphosate in the spray tank and started over here on this north block. And I wanna show you guys when we get over there. I started down through there in my ATV sprayer, four miles an hour as prescribed, the very first outside row. And as I was starting to make my rounds through there, I started getting this anxiety over my, like I'm killing this. I'm completely gonna wipe out the stand that I've worked my butt off to get to this, uh, to, to this point. So I found myself speeding up. And I think eventually I was going five and six miles an hour, just trying to, in my mind, um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put too much on. So the results are astonishing because that outside band that I truly traveled and put the right amount on, it did a 40, I mean, there's probably less than 40% remaining in the stand. So it, it, it thinned it just as they found in that study. Um, the rest of the stand that I went too fast on, it, it kind of yellowed off and looked a little weak through the summer, we noticed it this side was really tall by midsummer. This side was that side was really short, but by the end of the season in August, it just blew up and it caught right back up, and it, it's as if nothing ever happened. So we struggled with: Are we going to do that to the entire field? And then just kicking around camp one time, we just we we decided to go this route, leaving the thick outer band all the way around the field. We've created these openings, and we're going to call it the rooms and hallways technique <laughs> or practice. So we're creating these these openings inside the stand with connecting hallways going different directions. There's every little area, has, there's a corner, there's a room in it. And this is gonna go into a diverse uh, wildflower forb mix that we're gonna to implement today. Um, we're gonna to use a, a cover crop of winter wheat. We're gonna to toss in just a little bit of clover as a, to fill in the open spots. But we're putting basically a pollinator warm season, warm, excuse me, a warm season um, forb and wildflower mix inside the stand so that we've got outer shield of entire thing is surrounded by cover. We can still get around the farm. Nothing can in, that's inside of here will be able to see us. Um, at the same time, we're creating the diversity that we're after. Food, pollinator, game birds, wild turkeys, uh, of course our deer are gonna love what we're gonna do here. Um, remember, there's a lot of weeds in the spectrum that are good weeds. And um, basically what we're planting today are native plants that um, the wildlife will find useful.
This weekend marked the very first visit of my new grandson, Bo James York, and Zach's the proud papa, and we've had a great weekend. We asked him to come, the girls before they headed home, to bring the boy out here on the project. This is his first time on the ground out here, so it's been a special weekend, and the old man's pretty proud and happy this little fart. Everything that the light touches is yours. <laughs> <laughs>